Welcome to MH2801 video segment on examples of multi-valued functions. So in this particular video segment, we are going to go through two particular multi-valued functions that are important in the that we will sometimes encounter in the study of physics. So the first example that we will talk about is the natural logarithm of the complex number z, so which I will write as f of z equals to ln z. Now, if I write z in its polar form, which is equals to r e i theta, then f of z, if we treat it as a function of r and theta, can then be written as the ln of r e i theta, Okay, because this is the logarithm of a product, we can write this as a sum of logarithms, ln of r plus a ln of e i theta, which should become, of course, ln r plus i theta. So it seems that, that this function poses no problem at all, okay, except that when we remember, let's recall, that because the function e i theta is periodic, you have e i theta equals to e i theta okay, plus 2 pi. So you give you exactly the same uh, combination of cosine theta and sine theta. And of course, it's also the true for e i theta plus 4 pi. So in actual fact, e i theta plus 2n pi for any real number n will give you exactly the same complex number. But if we substitute this general formula into f of z, okay, then we will find that this is ln of r plus ln of e i theta plus 2n pi and therefore this is ln r plus i theta plus 2n pi okay, for integers n and you see that for different integers n different integers n you end up with different values so this is why we say that the natural logarithm of the complex number z is a multi-value function so what is another example of a multi-value function that we will encounter frequently in physics and that is the square root function. Now let me illustrate why it is considered multi-value. So let's write f of z equals to uh, square root of z, which is of course the same as z to the one-half power. Again, we will write z in its polar form as r times e i, okay, uh, e i theta, where theta is the argument of the complex number, but we will add in 2n pi straight away because uh, these are the family of uh, arguments that will give you exactly the same complex number z but you see that when we substitute this form this polar form of z into the fun function f of z equals to square root z you end up with square root of r times e i theta plus 2n pi times one half let me change over to a blue pen at this point because I've forgotten to do so earlier you get square root a half and then because the square root of an exponential you can just bring the one half into its exponent we get e i okay theta plus 2 n pi divided by 2 which is r square root r e i Okay. theta over 2 plus n pi for n being an integer. Now if you go through, if you go through the values n can take, different values that n can take, you find that you end up with two different functional values. You either end up with square root of z 
times e i theta over 2 for n equals to 0, 2, 4, 6, and in general, even integers, or you end up with square root of z e i theta over 2 plus pi. Okay, for n equals to 1, 3, 5, 7, and in general, odd integers. Okay, these two values are different, they're not the same. In fact, you can write them as you can write uh, square root of r e i theta over 2 plus pi as square root of r e i theta over 2 e i pi which is equals to minus square root of r e i theta over 2 because e i pi is equals to minus 1. Therefore, the function f of z, the function f of z equals to the square root of z is considered multi-valued. Okay, now how do we deal with multi-valued functions? We will learn how to do so in the next two video segments on Riemann surfa Riemann surfaces and also branch cuts.